you. Um, so first of all, I'm going to just check. I don't see Malud yet, but um, I'm going to go ahead with the intros and hopefully she'll join real soon. So we're going to have a special speaker today, Malud. Um, but first of all, I would like to welcome you to all who found our invitation inspiring enough to join today. So we know your time is valuable and, um, and actually we thank you for choosing to spend it with us today. Um, our theme is Thriving with Change. And the community holding space for this conversation is the Open Leadership Network. This is our first Open Leadership Network virtual community event. Um, and Coaching Agile Journeys. Um, Coaching Agile Journeys has been around for four years and we have been doing virtual events. And so I'd love to know if you found us through Coaching Agile Journeys or through the Open Leadership Network somehow where we found ourselves aligned and that's why we were coming together um, and joined forces. Um, so yeah, if you've attended an OLN class or symposium, we'd also love <laughs> to know that. Um, so let me just see if Malud, I'm checking to see if there's Malud, I don't see her here online yet. Um, but I'm going to start by saying that um, I know Malud, Malud for a few years, and Malud uh, has the Remote Forever Summit, and I'll be pasting some links, and through her talk, I'll, I'll, um, I'll, I'll share some more links. It's the biggest um, online conference about bringing Agile and remote work together, and for those of you who don't know me, it's a topic I'm very passionate about, and I contributed to the first two years of the conference as a speaker. Um, and now they're on their fourth year and her Slack community has over a thousand Agilists right now. So I'm going to be um, pasting some of those links as we go along um, as well. So I'd love to hear from you. Um, it, I, I don't see Malud here quite yet, so I want to reach out to her. But first of all, I'd love to know, anyone want to share what made you show up today um, to spend time with us and what's top on your mind as we enter this open space? Any brave souls? For me, it's been more, I guess I'll be the one. <laughs> for, uh, for me, it's been more of trying and learning more about the potential for remote, especially within uh, the Agile experience. And I mean, I've talked, I've probably talked, it's probably one of those big things I've always thought about, especially with when we were talking about some of this group um, and understanding how um, some of the challenges that we can with remote, but also some of the, some of the hindrances from the you know, companies hindering uh, remote because they keep because they're thinking that agile don't agile does not equal remote and I'm, I was finding that with a lot of positions that I was trying to look out for for, my, for new opportunities and that's why I just that's where I did get a little bit discouraged so now what I'm trying what I'm trying to understand now is how both can actually coincide in fact that would be representing the future of you know the future trend as opposed to simply insisting that everyone be in the office just because this is the way it works and that's it so this is what I'm hoping to get out of the meeting today and I'll jump in, Heidi. My name is Suzanne Daigle, and I'm an open space facilitator who has fervently believed that of, in the partnership between Agile and Scrum beyond software. And I'm really, really believing that this COVID, I'm going to call it an opportunity, is going to enhance and further our joint goals and missions in an amazing way creating an emergent field for all of us to live in chaos and get some really good stuff at the other end. So I'm very happy and grateful to be here. Thank you. I saw, I saw Marcel raised her hand. Do you want to maybe? <laughs> sure, I'll just say with? a few words. Um, I too am an open space facilitator, but normally I work in a larger organization and I'm really concerned with the impediments that keep organizations from embracing Agile, the things that are deeper in the culture. But I'm particularly interested today because I think we are at a turning point as we begin to open up in various ways and various states to create a future for ourselves, um, both remote and on site, that will allow organizations to develop and move forward in a more positive way. And I see this as an opportunity to see where we all are in terms of things that might help us do exactly that. So that's what brought me. Thank you. Yeah, um, I'll uh, chip in. Uh, I'm Vicki Braun. I'm in Central Florida area, and I um, love every open space event I'd ever been to. And um, I also really appreciate being able to connect with my tribe uh, in person at meetups, uh, conferences, um, 
and especially open events. And so I've really been mourning um, not being able to do that in person anymore. And I'm curious about uh, how an open event might work uh, remotely. So thanks for offering this opportunity. Thank you for sharing. Do we have time for another? Yes. Um, so my name is Ann K. Brea. Um, thank you so much for creating this awesome opportunity to get inspired and to learn. Uh, I was um, fortunate enough to attend the Open Leadership Conference. I forget how many months ago in the Boston area. Um, I've also um, gone through open space uh, training with Daniel Mezik. And um, I too miss the opportunities in the Boston area where we all get together that face to face, but I am um, a glass half full person and I am finding the opera the new opportunities where those groups are creating these this type these type of meetings and I feel like I'm connecting to people all all around the world actually through this so I um, am appreciating that and thank you all for coming together today. And I'm looking forward to being inspired and um, growing our energy and feeling part of a community. So thanks. Thank you. So I noticed Malud has joined now. And um, Malud, I just wanna thank you for showing up today. And um, Malud is founder and host of Remote Forever Summit. I shared a little bit about you Malud beforehand. Um, and I, in your little abstract that you shared, planning is everything and the plan is nothing. Um, so I'm just going to read a little bit about what you shared. Um, in, the, in the current global health crisis, many agile organizations such as Vicky, Vicky has shared, have found themselves suddenly outside their plan, needing to review how they worked and adapt to a new way of working, remote work and agile. So this is the space that, um, that Malud is passionate about. And so as she does her uh, quick um, keynote, speech before we get started with the open space talks today I'll be putting some links in there how you can connect with Malud and learn more about what she does um, so really remote forever has been on a mission to bring remote work to agile for many years um, so in this talk you will learn how to maintain your business agility while working remotely with the support of a growth mindset it will challenge some of the assumptions you have about working remotely and will inspire you to upgrade your mindset and get ready to adapt to new ways of communicating with your coworkers. Um, so without further ado, I am going to turn it over to Malud and thank you so much Malud for agreeing to share your time and uh, knowledge with us today. Thank you so much for accepting me. Hi everybody. Uh, before we get started, I do what I normally do in events that are as big as this one. Uh, I don't know like how many of you have used Zoom before, but if you haven't, make sure that you show the gallery view and if you prefer hide the non-video participants using an option that you have so you see all beautiful faces on the screen and you don't have to just be staring at me. But what I will do is that I will share some slides with you and I will hopefully inspire you to remember that Agile has the answer to a lot of our challenges because Agile is based on common sense. So without further ado, I'll just share my screen with you. And it seems like my screen sharing is disabled host. Could you please allow me to share my screen? Thank there you, you go. You're welcome. All right, so remote working in Agile in the middle of an Agile transformation. As Heidi said, remote working has been my passion and Agile is my life. So bringing the two together for the past couple of years has been really like keeping my life and my career in a happy state. But I'm a little sad that a health crisis was what it took for the majority of the world to realize that remote work was indeed the reality that we were all living in. As Heidi said, you can connect with me on social media and uh, I just put the handles here for convenience. Feel free to connect. To start this presentation, I wanna ask you this question and I would really appreciate it if you could share the answers with me in chat. Where do you go to get real work done? When you wanna be absolutely productive, when you wanna be focused on getting the results that you need done.
Prevy office at home. Okay, I can't see the answer. Somehow my computer is not letting me see both the chat and the I can read some of those out. in full screen. Please, you want me to read you. some of those out? So um, anywhere but with big headphones and loud music or white noise, a cafe in my home office desk, go everywhere and anywhere, free space with music and nature are some of the responses That's that we've awesome. gotten so far. That's awesome. In seclusion, okay, I'm gonna someone see said. If I can... <laughs> Wonderful. That's beautiful. So this question was asked from 10,000 people back in 2013. And out of those 10,000 people, the office during workday is where I am most productive, said no one. And there is no, it's no surprise that people feel more productive when they are in anywhere other than the open office that we and companies spend millions of dollars every year to rent and to buy real estate, creating these environments where people are basically not productive and they don't even get their work done. So why is that? I asked myself this question many years ago and I hope that I can inspire you with the answers that I have come up with. This report is the State of Agile report. Many of you have probably seen it. The surprising fact in this the screenshot that I took from the report is this number. 97% of the respondents claim that they have some sort of agile practice in their company. This number was as low as 60% not long ago, maybe just like a couple of years ago. And it's really surprising that the number is this high. At the same time, remote work is on the rise. A lot of companies had to suddenly start working remotely due to the health crisis that we're in. And interestingly enough, a report by Gartner shows that about three in every four CFO found themselves in this sudden remote work situations are trying or are deciding to keep these positions as permanently remote. What I'm trying to tell you is that distributed companies are becoming agile and agile companies are becoming distributed. So remote work is no longer the future. It is the reality of our work and it is something that we need to learn how to embrace and how to live it for the rest of our lives. Remote working has a lot of benefits for people. Now, I know that you might be thinking, oh, but this work from home thing is so stressful. I feel like I have an additional job because I have to take care of my kids as I work or I have like all this extra anxiety and extra stress with me and that's valid but i'm telling you that remote working before the health crisis was something completely different or at least a slightly different the benefits for comp uh, for companies are mostly focused on cost reduction and increased productivity in the uh, amongst employees because the employees were free because they were feeling more productive they were feeling the, the freedom that allowed them to adapt their own schedule and adapt their own ways of working and make sure that they contribute to the business as well as they could. For employees, uh, sorry, for employers, one major benefit that is probably not listed here is also access to top talent. Companies could find the talent where it was without spending too much money on relocating a person together with their family all the way to where the, the headquarters of the company were and their search was not limited to one city anymore they had a pool of uh, a global pool of talent to hire from and then the employees also get a lot of benefits imagine like now that you're working from home how much money are you saving every month by not paying for gas money by not paying for public transportation tickets by actually gaining time that you used to spend in the commute and all the extra fatigue that came with that. Probably a lot. The number that comes from the survey is an average of 5K per year that every individual can save. Imagine how, how much your life could be improved by just spending that money on yourself, on your health. Maybe spending that money on learning a new language, maybe spending that on learning the instrument you've always been putting off to learn or just investing in your health or in your kids or whatever reason that you have. What I'm saying is that remote working has a lot of benefits for the individual. So if you're not feeling some of those productivity benefits, some of the factors of feeling healthier and feeling fitter and getting more exercise done, that is because we are all in the crisis. 
we are not necessarily working remotely. We are coping with the crisis and getting work done at the same time. So keep that in mind and bear with me with an open mind and help me show you how Agile can help you become better remote workers. I have a privilege because I get to work from beautiful places like that. That is actually the computer I am presenting from, which I've owned for almost 10 years now. It's probably time to replace it. But I feel privileged that I get to work from places like this and stay connected with my colleagues. And interestingly enough, the remote work aspect of my career came very naturally to me because I immigrated as a student and then I had to stay connected with my family and my siblings from afar. And for me, having that deep human connection was very, very important and valuable. And I found ways to stay connected and to make sure that the level, the depth of the connection is not lost. I bring that to my work and I teach my clients to work that way too, to be able to connect with each other. To make it even more extreme, even my wedding had an element of remote work. Here you can see a picture of me right after the ceremony where I was being congratulated by someone who had watched the ceremony remotely. So I know I understand that this is a privilege that came with the hardship of my immigration, but I want you to realize that work is what we do. It's not a place we go to. We no longer can say I'm going to work and mean I'm commuting to a specific location because that is not work. Work is really what we get done together collaboratively. The challenges that people face when they work remotely, I categorize them using the Agile Manifesto. So for those of you who are familiar with the Agile Manifesto, you can see the little humor I'm playing here. What happens is that Agile companies and many other companies that are practicing some sort of Agile, when they are distributed, when they, are, when they go remote, they ask the question, what tool should I use to do X? And that X is usually a practice that they used when they were co-located in an office. So what they're really doing is that they're putting tools and processes over individuals and tools. Whereas those of us who are familiar with Agile, we know that Agile Manifesto's first value is putting individuals and interactions over processes and tools. So when I get the question, what tool should I use to do X? It's a very weird question for me to get because my first answer to that would be, what are you trying to achieve? What is the purpose that you're trying to get? And how can tools empower the individuals to interact better? I wanna challenge you and your assumptions about communication. I think communication can happen in two different forms. One is synchronous and the other is asynchronous. The main challenge that companies face when they go remote is that they depend highly on synchronous communication. They try to bring their in-office communication style into the remote space, which means that they would end up having more meetings, having more chats, and having more meetings online is very, very tiring and frustrating and fatiguing at the end of your day of staring at this square in front of you. Your shoulders are crunched. You're gonna feel really tired. So it is important to choose the right method of communication for the right kind of activity and the purpose that you're trying to achieve. Synchronous is good for decision making. It's good for resolving conflicts, for quick synchronization, for collaborative problem solving, for socializing and celebrating, for coaching. Asynchronous, however, is good for sharing information. So if you are sharing information and you're not getting immediate feedback or you don't need to get immediate feedback, choose asynchronous because that gives people peace of mind, that keeps people the ability to use their time productively and on their own terms. Async is good for presenting data and findings. If you're a CEO or a manager who needs to inform people of a certain topic, instead of calling for an all staff meeting or for everybody in your team to be present for you to present that data and findings, create an email, create a video, create an audio, make it so that people can consume the information on their own time and respond to you on their own time. Async is good for sharing and gathering ideas and opinions. 
if you run retrospectives, you know that the first part of the retrospective is gathering data, right? You can do that asynchronously. You don't need to sit quietly in front of a video camera and write post-its on a virtual whiteboard. You can choose which parts of your current rituals can be done asynchronously and prefer asynchronous to synchronous as much as possible. Gathering data of any kind, any kind really can be done asynchronously. And sequential co collaboration, like creating documents or creating software, like, you know, you probably are familiar with software development. There are very few companies that mandate pair programming or mob programming, which are sitting together and coding at the same time. Coding usually is an individual activity, which you create something, you send it to someone else for review and you get it back and you review it and you make, you, you make improvements on it. So any kind of sequential collaboration should and can be done async. So my question for you is this, and I want you to remember this going out of the session. Can you solve the problem without a meeting? If your answer is yes, don't add a but to it. Just solve the problem without the goddamn meeting. Challenge number two is that we put comprehensive documentation over working software and we should be doing the exact opposite. You probably can relate to this a little bit, especially if you are in IT and software development. We have meetings, meetings, and more meetings instead of creating working valuable software. First, we meet to create the product vision, roadmap, and product backlog. Then we meet to make changes to that vision and backlog and roadmap. Then we continuously reprioritize that backlog. Then we update the status of the work every day in the tool that we use for task management. We also need to tell each other that we have changed the status. Then we use chat and comments in the tools to synchronize. Somehow, despite how much we meet and communicate and synchronize, our architecture keeps getting worse and we keep introducing more bugs. It could be because we don't have enough time to write test code, but we have continuous integration pipelines, so there is that. We sometimes must have code freezes or release freezes to do some more integration testing. Yes, our software keeps crashing. What is penetration testing? Security, right, security. I have no idea who takes care of that in my company. Does any of this resonate with you? If it does say type yes in the chat. We have very valuable retrospectives though. You know, Mulud, you're telling us all these things about how we're spending too much time in meetings, but we have retrospectives and in our retrospectives, we take action. Our actions are usually, let's have a meeting about our ways of working and make sure that we do some meeting differently. But you know, it's really difficult to do anything because we are a distributed team and we work in different time zones. The thing is, what we do is that we blame remote working quite often. And if you notice, the real challenge is that we're having ineffective communication. It is not that we are working remotely. So what I want you to try is to stop trying to copy co-located behavior. Imagine you're starting from a blank slate. Remote working is your reality. How can you be effective in your communication? And I think a very good reason, a very good question to ask is what is the purpose I'm trying to achieve? And how can I achieve that purpose without meetings or without this certain practice that I'm currently used to? You must think and behave differently. And if you're in IT, I'd like you to invest in your technology that can enable and empower individuals to interact and to communicate more effectively. And of course, create enough documentation. Challenge number three, we value contract negotiations over software collaboration. We assume because we are remote and because our customers are remote that we need to commit to as big of a scope and as detailed of a, a, a list of features as possible. So we end up committing to stuff that we can't necessarily deliver or that are not necessarily valuable. You probably have seen these machines installed in many different locations. We collect feedback constantly from our users and from our customers and from our internal stakeholders. But how much and how often do we really use that data? How do we set the intention for how we're going to use that data? I want you to remember that the reason why we started 
gathering so much data, so much feedback, was that we wanted to create a balance between doing precisely what the user asks and assuming that we know what they want and ignoring them. We wanted not to break that balance. And we ended up with all that data that we're collecting unnecessarily and we don't do much with it. I want you to set an intention for the data that you're gathering before you gather it. And why that is important is that, of course, it does minimize the number of your meetings, which is something that I do encourage you to do. But it also reminds us that collaboration is not the goal. It's the means to a goal. We're not collaborating with our customer just for the sake of it. We're collecting that data, we're collaborating with our customer in order to make better products and services for them and making them a better person, making their life easier. And I want you to remember when next time you want to complain about a com company that is your client or a team that is your internal uh, customer or supplier. And I want you to remember that a team or an organization is not necessarily an, a standalone entity on its own. They are composed of people. People within organizations are the ones that collaborate together. If you put individuals above tools, if you make sure that you're valuing their interactions above tools and processes, you will have a much easier time collaborating remotely because you will change your mindset and you will think remote first. Work together with the people that you work with instead of committing and signing those fixating contracts and define your goals and achieve it together with the people that are waiting to receive that result. Does this resonate with you guys? I'm sure you're familiar with experiment and learn. We want to experiment and learn all the time. And that brings me to the next challenge. Following a plan over responding to change is what I'm pretty sure that you are all experiencing because I see it over and over and over again. Remote working has been the reality of work for years. So how come your company is suddenly remote? Well, it is human nature not to seek out a replacement until we really need one. So the challenge here is asking ourselves, do we really need to work a certain way? Do we really need to bring that in-person, in-office practice into our online environment or can it be done differently? These two people are pair programming. If that is absolutely the only way this work can get done in your company, bring it along. But allow yourself to think outside the box and get creative. Reflect and adjust your ways of working often. In Agile, we say, if it hurts, do it more often, because it allows us to get out of, to think out of the box and to start creating and innovating and dare to do things differently. Do not replicate the office. If there is one thing you're taking from this conversation that we're having, I'd like you, I'd like you to be this. Do not replicate the office. Meetings or more meetings or more FaceTime in general will not magically solve the problem of your ineffective communication. Blaming remote working will not do that either. If you're working remotely, you must think and behave fundamentally differently about communication. Invest in learning the mindset and the skill set for working remotely. Because if you just wing it, you will end up trying to replicate the office and you might harm your business for the long run. And this is a gift that I have for you. If you want, I wrote this book a while back and I have updated it recently. And you can just download the first chapter of it for free by going to remoteforever.com slash ebook. And that is all for me. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much, Malud. Thank you for, uh, for sharing that really valuable information. And the theme of course is thriving with change. So Malud, will you stick around for the open space activities or do you have to leave? I can, no, I can stay around for about half an hour. This is evening for me. I am in Stockholm, Sweden in Europe. So I'm okay. gonna just have dinner with my family after that. Okay, um, all right, great. Um, thank you again, Malud, uh, much, much appreciated. Thank you. Um, yeah, so the theme is thriving with change. And of course you're all here uh, because hopefully you saw the rocket with the apple trees <laughs> growing out of it. Um, and register for this event. But this event came, out because, came about because I had some burning questions myself. As I was unemployed, I asked myself, what's next for me? What's next for all of us? 
what's next for agile coaches, for agile in general? We need to be resilient. We, we think that agility brings resilience, but how will remote work and distributed teams change the work that we do? How do you lead in this new environment and how do you follow, right? As everybody is just a window, there's no corner office anymore and everybody's the same size on the screen. And so many folks were struggling with remote work. So many other questions were bubbling up in my mind besides these. And I'm sure that you have some of your own, which is why you're here. And others were reaching out to me with these questions. So um, Isaac, um, and if you just raise your hands, so people can see you and Salah and Mark Sheffield and myself decided the timing was right to launch the Open Leadership Network virtual community. And we had people willing to um, help run the event and you are here as participants. So I'm sure we can all make the most of this time by uncovering answers to these questions and some of your own together. And I am gonna introduce Isaac as our guide along this journey. So Isaac, um, thank you so much for facilitating this open space. Thank you so much, Heidi. And whoa, there we go. <laughs> Welcome everybody. I'm Isaac Garcia and I'll be your facilitator for this open space that we're doing together. And, and I first wanna welcome you all. We've had some wonderful introduction content there by Malud, but I wanna invite you all to take a big deep breath, take it in and then just let it out. I want you all, I know we're not, but I want you to imagine for a second that we're all seated in chairs in a circle that looks like this and we're all facing each other. So thank you to everyone who can have your webcam on. I know not everyone can, but it's very helpful to have that on because what we want to create here in this open space is an open environment. And that's really my job as a facilitator. I'm going to introduce how we're going to work the meeting and some of our principles and, and laws of the meeting. But more important than anything, my job is to create a space to allow us to have the conversation that's going to move us forward in this theme. So I want to thank you all for being here and for coming and bringing your full self. Because without you bringing yourself, there wouldn't be much of an open space here. So thank you for that. So first of all, I wanna tell you how we're going to run the meeting. So we've already had a speaker, which has been great. What we're gonna do here in a second, when I'm finished, I'm gonna declare that the marketplace is open. And the marketplace, if you haven't been in an open space, the marketplace is a spot, normally physically it's up on a wall, but we have a Google doc that I'll share. Don't worry, we'll show you where that is and I'll show you what it looks like here in a second. But that's gonna be where the ideas of what we're gonna talk about are shared. If you've been to a lean coffee, it's kind of like that. It's where this is the topic for that section. And so what I wanna be asking you right now, all of us are participants. I wanna ask you if there's a topic that you're interested in sharing, you're interested in leading the discussion, you're interested in kicking it off and saying, let's talk about this. If so, go ahead and start even now jotting that down for when we open the marketplace here in a second. And you can become a convener. Every one of us participants can become a convener and step up to that virtual marketplace and claim a slot and say, in this slot, I'd like to talk about this. The way it's going to work is we have Zoom meetings for each one of those. And so when you see the marketplace, which we'll share, you can go in and say, during this time, I'm going to go here. And it's the same as in an open space moving over there. And so we'll move from Zoom meeting to Zoom meeting. This is the main room, and this main room will be here throughout the extent of the open space. So you can always come back here and Mark or other, other co-hosts can help you if you need to find your way or I meant to get to this session, we're here to help for that. So be thinking about topics you're passionate about that you're gonna be able to maybe kick off in the marketplace. And for all of you who are just gonna be participants, we want you to, to engage in those as you're interested. So let me introduce a couple of ideas for us. Number one, Heidi mentioned the theme. It's thriving with change. Thriving with change. I'm not gonna add any more to that. Thriving with change is what we wanna talk about. We have four principles in an open space. Number one, whoever comes, they are the right people. Number two, whatever happens is the only thing that could have. Number three, whenever it starts is the right time and number four, when it's over, it's over. So I, I just hope that all of you just feel a weight off your shoulders. There is no pressure in an open space. We are coming, we are interested, we are engaging. Don't feel pressure to perform in a certain way. Just bring yourself and show up and enjoy the conversation and what emerges from that. We also have one law, it's the law of two feet. And what that says is, is during our time together, if you find yourself in any situation where you are neither learning nor contributing, use your two feet, in our case, two fingers, right? Right click, left click. Use your two feet or your two fingers to go to a more productive place. 
there is no, we're going to sign you here and you here and you have to stay here. You're free to go where you're learning or contributing. So take that personal decision right to move to where you're the most productive during this. So from that, and this is a beautiful analogy, there are two roles of a butterfly who will sit around and look relaxed. So go somewhere and sit for the entire time. That's great. Or you can be a bumblebee, which means you go in and you go out. So if you're in a meeting, you're in a Zoom meeting and someone jumps into that Zoom meeting and then leaves, don't think they're bored or whatever. They're just cross-pollinating ideas and moving around. So the bumblebee moves from group to group and cross-pollinates and the butterfly sits and looks beautiful. All right, and one more thing. This is a great reminder for us. I hope that all of you come and you're prepared to be surprised. Prepare to be surprised about what's gonna come out. We're not controlling this. I don't know what's gonna come out but I'm confident that we're gonna have a great conversation and a great open space. With that being said, let's move into the marketplace again and introduce you to what it's going to look like and how we're going to use it. So here in a second, when I say the marketplace is open, we are going to share that link with you. And what we're gonna ask is if you have a topic that you're interested in to go to that link and to share that topic. Let me show you really quickly what this looks like. This is the sheet and what it looks like. And what you'll see here is a link for the main room. You will see participants, but you'll also see the rooms down here. So this is room A and you have a Zoom link behind that. You then have each of the time slots. Our first time slot is gonna start at one o'clock Eastern time. That's in 23 minutes. We're counting down towards that. So that's our first time slot when it's gonna start. So if you wanted to be a convener and you said, I have a passionate topic about thriving with change and you don't see that anyone's put anything in here yet, you can jump in and you can start typing in what it is that you would like to talk about and then put your name as the convener of that session. So when it comes time for that session, you can use the link room A to jump over to the Zoom meeting for that. I will ask, please, use the notes link for each of these rooms so that we have procedures that we can share with everybody, proceedings, I'm sorry, after it's over, we can take our learning from here. There's some great guidelines up here. And of course, if you have any questions or challenges, you can, in the main room, ask Mark or Salah or myself or Heidi, and we can answer those and help you facilitate. So that's what the marketplace looks like. But let me just say, before we, we start moving in that direction, we have an amazing gift right now. Many of you, I'm not sure what your work situation is, but often we work in a place where we're told what to do. You must do this, you must do that. And one of the beautiful things about this next time is you get to be free to create. And so what I wanna say lastly is if you're a convener and you decide you wanna introduce a session, please follow this procedure. Follow the link, go over, type in your information, and then come back here to the main room and unmute and say, I'm so-and-so, and I would like to talk about this at this time and just introduce your session. And that way, as they're being generated, you generating a session might trigger an idea for someone else to say, oh, I wanna have this session as well. And so I'm going to end it there because this is not about control or us making something happen. It's about us co-creating something together. So that being said, we'll be here for questions, but I am happy to declare that we are now going to open the marketplace and invite you now to move from participant to convener and add topics to that. And there's no pressure to do that if you don't want to, but we'll follow the laws and the principles and we're gonna have a great open space. So I'm gonna pause there, ask my co-hosts if there's anything else we'd like to mention. We've, we have shared the marketplace in the comments. Good, it looks like I covered everything. Well, then this is wonderful. We're gonna let the marketplace evolve. I'll be here in case we need to hold the space. Otherwise, let's create. So do we announce stuff here or do we add it to the spreadsheet? If you could please add it to the spreadsheet first so you have a time, so you know what time it is, and then come back here and please announce it. So if you grab that one o'clock slot in room A, come back here and say, I'm so-and-so at one o'clock in room A, 
I have proposed the topic of and just introduce it for everyone here. Thank you. Great question. Cool. So, question I about the, similar question about the spreadsheet. What's the lounge in the hallway? Wonderful question as well. The lounge in the hallway are two places that you can also meet. If we were in a physical space, you could decide not to go to one of the rooms and you could step out in the hallway or be in the lounge. So those are additional spaces for us to convene. So if you meet someone and I am, you say, that's an interesting topic and you'd like to step into a place to have a side conversation, you may use the lounge in the hallway. Great question, thank you. I added a session in room A about uh, remote agile retrospectives. Um, like a quick explanation, Agile retrospectives are this, um, not specifically about Agile, but they are meetings where individuals meet and reflect on uh, what happened in the past or what they see in the future and, uh, and adjust in order to become more effective. Um, yep, so if you're interested in that, there's no need to be familiar with Agile, but uh, this topic is going to be like that in the remote environment that we have to can I like run things today? This is Gil Broza. Can I go? Can I say what, what my subject is? Yes, feel free. Right. Uh, so something that um, I've been mulling over and I would love to talk to some people about is, um, you know, we, we've had so many cases of companies kind of doing Agile, but the pandemic kind of threw everybody into really being Agile and you know, people first and throwing plans out the window and, and, and trying to be, you know, collaborative and responsive and safe and this and that. And, and I'm wondering uh, whether we can see more of that happening later on, um, what that will do for, to frameworks, for instance, which are not, I, I find not particularly helpful at this time. Um, so, yeah, it's a, there's a lot of prognostication in here. Thank you. Um, this is Suzanne Daigle, and uh, in Room J, first session, the topic I wrote was optimizing the opportunity, getting on the same page. By that I mean, when we get back post-COVID, what are those first conversations going to be? Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Uh, I'm Adrian. I put something in uh, room C. I'm from the UK, in case you can't tell that by my subtle twang there. I put something in room C for the first session around uh, evolving leadership. Uh, I'm interested in exploring what this really means for leaders with everything that's going on in the world, because I think we talk a bit sometimes about getting back to normal, but I think normal wasn't really working for quite a lot of people whether we're talking about remote work or the climate or people from different, different ethnic backgrounds around the world. So it seems like we could maybe do a bit better. And I'd like to just explore, I know it's quite a big question for 20 minutes, uh, explore what that means to maybe for the leadership models going forward, coming out of this. And that brings up a good point. In the event that you're having a conversation and it starts to expand, you can look at the marketplace and say, hey, let's take this conversation to another room so you can move move about. Uh, some of these rooms do have a 40 minute limit. So in the event it hits a 40 minute limit, everyone will have to leave and then you can rejoin. That room will reactivate for 40 more minutes. So, but thank you for that topic. Um, I added a topic in room B, and of course this is probably my pet peeve more than anything else about uh, companies resisting remote work or resisting agile. In essence, wanting to go back to the pre-COVID co-location environment. And really, it's just more of determining where they see their company moving uh, toward if they become more receptive uh, to uh, because of COVID-19, that they become more receptive to working at home or work or remote flexibility or location flexibility, or are they simply doing it because of this and then demanding? And I've seen this in a lot of job listings. When this ends, you are work. Everyone's working in the office, period. So just trying to address those type of concerns, seeing what their companies are doing and also for, as for my standpoint, um, looking at opportunities, where are they, and just trying to see where those op, where the agile opportunities are, are they in a lot of companies that are still wanting to be co-located versus actually allowing people to be remote and have the flexibility and time that agile, that agile allows. So I have that in room B starting at 
Is it starting at one or so? Yes. I'll try not to make I'll try not to make it a gripe session. So please, uh, open. Uh, please just make <laughs> come along with with uh, definitely ideas and then just trying to get it just the scope of what's out there. I wanna take this pause also to uh, invite everyone back. One thing I wanna make sure that we all know is that at 2.15, uh, so that's 15 minutes before we wrap up this session and convert to whatever time uh, is for you, we will be doing a closing circle here in the main room. And so during that time, we wanna see what is it that you learned and that you can take and apply. So please do come back. Even if you have to step away, maybe in the middle, maybe you have to leave for a bit, please do come back for that closing circle it's a great opportunity to see what everyone's going to be taking from the space and what they've what they've picked up during their journey together. So for Isaac, I've created one in room B from 125 to 150 slot, which would discuss about the remote tools for collaboration. And I'm not going to just talk about that, but uh, whoever joins in, like we are going to just talk about at least three, three uh, tools which has effectively helped them for collaboration for distributed teams. So it would be a shared learning. We would just like welcome everyone to just share their learning and then switch over to rooms whichever they want. Hey everybody, this is Dan Puckett here. I put in a session for the third time slot in room A. So that's starting at 150 Eastern. Um, I wanted to have a conversation around questions of freedom and control when working remotely. Um, management may, be, uh, may have certain interests that aren't getting fulfilled in the same way in the, in the new environment. Also, employees may have interests that aren't getting fulfilled in the same way in that environment. So I'd like to have a conversation around that. Okay, Dove here. Um, my topic is... Um, it, Let's see how I worded it. If, are we still needed? Because my theory is that whoever is not agile now will just die. It's the first time in history, I think, that people become agile because otherwise they won't survive and not because it's some theoretical need. So it, uh, let's talk about it. I, unfortunately, I, I have to take the first slot because um, I'm, in the, um, I'm in Nepal and it's quite late here. Well, I threw some topics in room E. Agile hiring, what should be changed for the remote workspace? It's all about how we're adapting to the remote way of working, but actually what should be changed as we're hiring people who would be resilient in this new way of working.
and just by way of informing everyone, the first sessions are scheduled to begin in just about 10 minutes. So we have just about 10 more minutes of marketplace collaboration. You can scroll through. Please keep adding your ideas and presenting them. Uh, this is Tom Brown in room D. Uh, my topic is leading when you are suddenly in an organization of one. Uh, and that is in the last slot at 150 in room D. Hi, I'm Daniel. Um, my session is the changes affecting us. Um, what changes were already true that no one, no one was acknowledging, but suddenly we are acknowledging as true, that have always been true, but just nobody's saying anything about it. And then what's true today that, that wasn't true yesterday? Um, you know, about our work and about our, how we work in the world. And then what's likely to be true um, in, in the near term? What's soon to be acknowledged that no one's acknowledging today that's, that's dropped that obvious to you right here, right now. I'm interested in that. And I'll bring some of my stuff. You bring some of your stuff. We'll have a good time. I'm in uh, room C, second session. Hi, this is Marcy. Sorry, I joined late, so I haven't got my camera turned on yet. Um, but I booked something. Uh, I literally just joined five minutes ago. Um, and there's something on the board. So um, uh, I booked something in room F. Um, so my topic is, so we aren't co-located, but should we be co-time zoned? Um, the biggest challenge I have at my company right now is we had embraced being a virtual organization before COVID. Um, but we still have challenges because our uh, leadership is still um, still buying into uh, outsourcing, a, a, you know, uh, teams, which I don't have a problem with, except we've got a mix. Every team's got a mix of people across three different time zones. And that's my biggest challenge is I'm trying to encourage leadership to, I'm okay with off offshore teams, but they all need to be offshore or they all need to be in a similar time zone. So I'm curious if anyone else has had that challenge, if you've had any successes convincing leadership uh, to change the model. Um, in our case, uh, obviously, um, a lot of times it's QA that ends up being the offshore. So embracing, uh, you know, that's part of the, the change is embracing, um, you know, automating QA and, and, and not dividing those roles. Um, so I'm curious if anyone else is experiencing that challenge or if anyone has managed to convince their leadership to fix that problem. As we enter into the last six minutes, one more thing I wanna mention is that the marketplace is dynamic. So in the event that you're hosting a session, I noticed a lot of sessions are in session one, but you wanna to attend a session in session one, we can use these last six minutes. You can do it via chat or no one else is speaking, you can unmute and maybe negotiate moving a session if there's one you wanna attend at a time when you wanna attend or you're hosting another one. So if we need to rearrange, you can also rearrange the marketplace uh, as you discuss and discuss that out. So about five minutes left before the first session opens. This is Suzanne and I have changed my topic that I had put initially optimizing the opportunity, getting on the same page, what will our first conversations be to the third time slot because I want to attend something else and I put that in room A, thank you.
Isaac, I don't know if you saw someone was asking about accessing rooms. I just saw that. Thank you so much, Vicki. Uh, so for how you access rooms, if you look at the spreadsheet and over to the left, the there is a hyperlink under the room name. So if you click on room A, the name, right underneath that, you'll see a hyperlink to another Zoom meeting, and that will take you to the Zoom meeting for that room. So each of those rooms is a Zoom instance. So you can jump to those. Keep the spreadsheet open to get back here, which I'll remind everyone for the closing circle at 2.15 Eastern time. So when the last session ends, to get back here, there's a link for main room at the top of the spreadsheet. So keep an eye on that main room link. You'll use that to get back here, but to get to each of the separate sessions, you'll click on the name of the room, room A, room B, room C, and then click on the Zoom link underneath that. And I'll take you to another Zoom meeting. Great question, thank you for asking. Oh, and Mark also says the link is at the bottom of the notes document. And please, by the way, it's easy to have great conversations, sometimes difficult if there's not a scribe identified please take the time to identify someone to just capture some notes so we can add them to the proceedings at the end that we can distribute to everyone. So if you weren't able to make a session, you can read some of the notes from that session. So please, each session, make sure to designate a scribe and you guys can co-edit those notes together or one person can edit as everyone else talks. Please make sure you capture some takeaways from the session. Thank you. Room B session three my topic what have we learned from the coronavirus pandemic and how will that affect agile and business agility for businesses to survive and thrive It's interesting to see this in action because um, I've been curious how y'all would pull it off. And so far you, you're doing a great job. However, it's interesting to me how quiet and polite everybody is. Whereas uh, at an uh, open space, I'm used to people kind of like, you know, elbowing each other or, or like, hey, what do you think? What looks good to you? So it's an, a different experience, but I still value it. Thank you so much for doing this. That's a great observation, Vicki. And, and I'll say to that point, because there's only one audio channel, it's hard to do it verbally, but you definitely should be elbowing each other and saying, what about this session in the chat? So I'd highly recommend you still have those side conversations, but the chat's the best place for that because there's only one audio channel for us in the room. And thank you everyone. You all are professionals in Zoom usage. So thank you so much for being such. Yeah, Isaac, I have a quick question, which is, um, I wanna send, I wanna zing some private personal notes to like 15 to 20 people here, but my um, own view of that is I see the co-hosts and the everyone and that's all I see. I don't see the individuals. Oh. And I went and looked in the list and there was no way to like chat through that way either. So um, I'm just wondering if there's a setting that can be done on the server side or whether it's something on my side I have to fix or change or something. That's a fantastic question. And as I look at the settings that I can see, I have participants can chat with no one host only or everyone publicly. I it's don't see setting, a chat setting. It's Sorry? Setting. Like an enhancement. Yes, yeah, I talked about it with Mark Sheffield and he kind of poked around with the settings and tried to change it, but he wasn't successful, so. Yeah, there is a setting. I've been receiving change. a bunch of private messages, so I don't think that it is a settings problem. I think it might be a personal problem that you're facing. Okay, all right, cool. All right, I'll look on my side. I'm having the same problem. Okay problem yeah, on my side. I'll, I've got the same. I think Malud is set up as a co-host, which is why we can see you. Mm. I'm set up in the same way, same problem. Okay. Well, that's something we will definitely look to solve and maybe even have to mention back to, to Zoom because that used to be something that people could do is chat privately to themselves. We will research Have that. a look at the security tab, bottom left. Yeah, I was going to say I was on a Zoom call this morning and I was able to chat to all 600 people who were in the Zoom call. So, um, and now I just see five or four, whatever it is. So I don't think it's a setting, I, I suppose it's possible, but it doesn't appear to be a setting on my side. Um, okay. Well, I apologize for, for that. This is a setting change that we'll need to look into that uh, hopefully we'll have figured out by the time we return for the closing circle um, at 2.15. But I will say, you're welcome to stay here and continue the conversation. The sessions are opening now. You may use the law of two feet. Enjoy your open space. We'll see you back here in this room, the main room, at 2.15 Eastern time. Enjoy your sessions.
Okay, I need help. How can I join any of the Zoom room? I can't see any breakout room. Oh, I knew. Yes, Dan. Hi. Yeah. Hi, how are you? Dan. Yeah, if you I'm go to. Really well, thank you. Yeah, you want to go to one of the rooms, right? Yes, I want to. So if you go to the, the main Google Doc there that's got the marketplace on it and you click oh, that okay. room link or you just copy the link, that'll do it. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Okay. If it doesn't work clicking it, then just copy it and paste it into your browser. You know, right click it to get it and then okay. paste it. Okay. okay. I just tried awesome. to enter Thank room you very C much. and it says waiting for host. I'm having the same trouble getting into C. Uh-oh. I'm having a look at that right now. Okay, thanks, Mark. Yeah. It seems that the waiting rooms have been turned on. Oh, no. You uh -oh. have, they're, they, Zoom changed it, so that's the default now. Yeah, so you have to deliver have problems into getting into the other rooms. Yeah, don't worry about it, though. Mark Sheffield's got it well in hand, believe me. <laughs> it won't take long at all. Yeah, I thought I had fixed that setting or changed that setting, but we'll we'll see. Meetings. Coming. Okay, that one's going.